I think with most, most people's opinion of us is that we, we, we show really fabulous figurative works of art, good old fashioned oil on canvas and bronze. And I've always loved doing that and I, I don't intend to stop. But as I have grown and, and, and got rather, uh, as, as, as mortality becomes ever more uh, apparent, I've wanted desperately to be a gallery in South Africa where we might just be the gallery where many young, up-and-coming, emergent talents might, might want to show. And so, due to that, we had some good years, and I love Johannesburg beyond the speaking of it, and so I built wow. this building. And a lot of people uh, uh, love it. I certainly do. And I decided not to call it Everett Reed. It's, it's something apart. It's for more conceptual, more edgy works of art than may be found at Everett Reed. And so this art fair will be showing not only the, some of the front rank artists that we showed and have showed for many years at, in, in Everett Reed, but also um, look at these extraordinary things, Angus Taylor, these will be on show. Um, felt grass, probably the most common substance on the African continent, organic substance, would be felt grass. Trillions of tons of it get burnt annually and, and <clears throat> one just looks at Gauteng in August, it's just black because we burnt all the felt grass. I do think probably the first time they've been made into art, grass has been made into craft. I think this is the first time felt grass has been made into art. And it art. has a kind of nostalgia. You look at it and you almost see the thatched roofs of, mm. of African homesteads mm. and, and the fact mm. that these, these, these figures are they're tilted and they're resting. There's, you know, and grass mats in mm. Africa. You, there's, there's such a sense of, 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 a, of a kind of a comfortable Africanness mm. about it. You, you almost want to sleep next to the people. Yeah. And they there smell nice. And they smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the only thing I had to do, which was remotely first world, was I had to put lots of fire retardant on them. Oh my God. So, okay. Well, then that's but, all. I mean, you know, yeah, but, but look how beautifully densely thatched mm. they are. And this is traditional thatchers who made it. And then, of course, Angus does the, the carving. Precisely. So we will be showing Angus. And I, I do uh, want to say, watch the space. And I think that the art fair is about watch the space. All dealers say this is what we're going to be doing or that's what we're going to be doing. But in fact, until three or four weeks before, and that is the case with dealers internationally and art fairs internationally, um, it's at the last minute something comes in and you think, my gosh, yeah. I want to put that sure. on the art fair. Uh, just as a, an, a bit of an aside, I've just come back from a, a trip to the UK and Paris, and everyone associated with contemporary art, who I spent more than 10 minutes with, said, what's happening with the Johannesburg Art Fair? How interesting. There are art fairs closing down in the world because the world is a tough place at the moment. There are a few starting up, but if one looks at what's happened to Dubai, um, sure. certainly uh, I, I understand uh, Fierca in Spain is, is under some stress. Um, there, there are art fairs under stress. Joburg Art Fair is one of the up-and-comers. People are fascinated with what's showing here. Um, and fascinated with the art emerging from not only southern Africa but, but east and west Africa as well. So it, it really was on everyone's lips when I was walking around Paris and London.